I'm Chris Walton from Foley Baker Incorporated. We take care of the organ here at South Salem. And uh, today we are here to tune the organ. And uh, tuning is uh, an interesting art. It takes two of us to do it. And one person is up in, in the chamber with all the pipe work and knows exactly what to do to, make them, to get them into tune. And I uh, uh, operate at the console where I set temperaments and um, and sort of guide the tuning through and help work the guy through the chamber so that we can uh, get done efficiently. Um, if it takes too long to tune, it's not a terribly good tuning because you've been in the chamber too long. Organs are very temperature sensitive. And so uh, the longer you're there, the more, the, more it, uh, the more you change the temperature of the room. Um, so uh, tempering, from, my, from what I do, my, uh, tempering is you alter the intervals. Uh, we, we, go, we go through the circle of fifths, and we alter the intervals so that you can play in all keys, so that um, all keys sound equally good. And, um, and we temper many, many things in the organ so that we, we have uh, good, uh, good many things to tune to, and so that the more you get in tune that way, the more, the more you can uh, really lock an organ into tune. So. We're going to begin and start uh, start our process. David DeBloy, work for Foley Baker Incorporated, a pipe organ service company that's been in business for 50 years. What I'm doing today is I am tuning this organ on the second half of the tuning team, which is a chamber man, and Chris is out at the console, and he leads the tuning, and I follow his lead. He'll decide what needs to be tuned from the console, and he'll play the pipes, and I tune that pipe as he holds the key down. He's comparing those notes, and um, when he compares those, there's a beat to the notes, and it's my job to bring those beats in even, so you don't hear, you just hear a nice clear tone. And um, there's all different kinds of pipes in an organ, and you have some good examples in here. You have, these are reed pipes right here, which has a wire to tune on. And they also um, have flaps, for instance, up on the top of these pipes here. Those are more for the tone of the pipe, but you can use them to tune if you have to. And then you have flue pipes, which are just a straightforward, actually, this style pipe right here, which is just a, cylindrical pipe with a tuning collar on the top. You have um, flute pipes which have caps on them and the cap is used to adjust the tuning. And we have mixtures right here which are a row of pipes that are all the same note at different pitches. And we have um, 
tuning caps, which I currently don't have handy, but we block off all of these pipes at the same time except for one, and then we progressively take those caps off and balance this row of pipes out to all sing and speak as one note. Um, the temperature is really important in here, and the organ is very sensitive to temperature. Um, 70 degrees is a normal temperature, and um, there's so much to it. It's uh, very interesting, and uh, it takes many years for somebody to learn how to tune in an efficient manner. Uh, because there's so many things to learn and there's so many little details as you can see when I'm touching a pipe just not only touching it but getting close to it can actually shade it and change the tune of the pipe so I have to be aware of my body position <clears throat> you can't stay too close to the pipe because your body temperature will actually affect the pipe the speech so this is the normal mode in which we turn tune the organ and um, it takes two of us to do it we work well together and it's uh, very important to take care of these instruments as we do yeah my name is Anthony Newman I'm playing a concert here in December on this wonderful instrument and I want to just say a few things about it but I thought you might like to hear just a couple of notes on it and here they are so that's part of a Bach fugue in C major from the Takata Dasho and Fugue in C. And uh, let me just tell you a few things about this organ. Uh, the few organs that I've designed, I think a total of five in my life, uh, are small but strong instruments. So I call them Mighty Mouse organs. Mighty Mouse. So this is a Mighty Mouse. This is as small as a mouse ever gets. And it has this distinction. There are not a lot of small stops, not a lot of soft stops. The soft stops would include, for example, this. And that's on the main manual, and then on the upper keyboard. Another flute, very pretty. And that's all that we have as far as soft stops. Now, the big stops are the trumpets, for example. And the mixtures, which are the high pitches on the pipes. I'll show you how they sound. Here we have the basic sound of the organ. I add the mixture, look what happens. And if I add the trumpet stops with it, and if I put it all together, then we get the... That is pretty much the full sound of the organ. Some time ago, there was almost no organ here. And uh, I was asked to come up with some kind of design for it. And this would have been around 1993. And so I came up with this kind of Mighty Mouse point of view. And we had a lot of uh, action as far as bids are concerned, and as far as people who wanted to have an instrument. Now, it also just so happened that Stephen Russell had built or rebuilt an organ at my church in Bedford, at that St. Matthew's Church, and he submitted 
a bid for this organ, and he got it because it was the low bid. And he designed an organ which is similar to my instrument in Bedford as far as brilliant sound, and that's what we have here. So it's an instrument that plays Bach very well. Uh, that's the main distinction of an organ. If it doesn't play Bach well, you should just go home because that's the main guy who made the organ survive to many different extents. I would say, for example, all churches have to have an organ because they have to play hymns and the congregation can only sing along with an organ. That's the first thing. The second thing is that in, in big music, grand music like uh, works of Mozart or Beethoven, an audience comes to hear music that's equal to that, and we are lucky to have about 12 works for the organ of Johann Sebastian Bach, which are at that level, and in my point of view, although this is a little bit extreme, I think that the instrument as a concert instrument has survived almost solely on the basis of these 12 pieces of his. Thank you. <laughs> You're watching Lewisboro Community Television, Channel 20.